Hello friends, this video on Amines part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll talk about basic characters of Amines. Amines are basic. Why? Because of the nitrogen. So you see, Amines, since they are basic, they react with acid to form salt. That is there. It reacts with acids to form salt. The question is why it is basic. So if you see amine, let's suppose there's R here and some H here, some H here. This is a lone pair of electron. So if you see nitrogen atom in this has lone pair of electron. That is first thing. And the second thing is there is a difference in electron negativity between nitrogen and hydrogen. And that makes amine more reactive and they also call Lewis base because they have lone pair of electrons to give correct see this amines have lone pair of electrons this is one reason why it is uh, basic and also there is a difference in electronegativity which makes this amine a reactive compound so we see the reaction for example I have a RNH2 is a primary amine if you react with water what will happen is it will form RNH3 plus and OH minus. So this is giving OH minus, we say it's base. And the basic strength of this amine depends on the dissociation constant. And which all depends on the structure of the amine. For example, this will have some different dissociation constant. This will have some different dissociation constant. Correct. So if you see this reaction, for this reaction, we want to write the Kb, that is the dissociation constant, is nothing but concentration of RNH3 plus concentration of OH minus divided by concentration of RNH2. Since water is ample, we'll ignore the water. Correct. So Kb is this. Higher is the value of Kb, more basic is the compound. Correct. Why? Because if you see OH minus concentration, if you want to find that is nothing but KB into concentration of RNH2 by concentration of RNH3 plus. So this is directly proportional to KB. So higher KB OH minus is directly proportional to KB. So higher KB implies more basic is the compound. Right, uh, a term called PKB also is in the market. That is nothing but minus log of KB that is used because these are all in the terms of 10 to the power minus 3, minus 4, difficult to handle. So, this PKB is used 10 to the power minus 3. If you take log and put a minus, it gives the number 3, 4, something like that. Right, so PKB is used, PKB is minus log of KB, but since it is minus log of KB the relation change. So smaller the value of PKB, greater is the basic strength. Why? Because there is a minus here. Correct. I can show you for example, let's suppose PKB is 10 to the power minus 5 and here KB is mm, 10, 10. Which one is bigger? Obviously, this is bigger. And let's take my PKB for this. PKB is what we got. Minus log of KB, that is minus of minus 5 plus 5. And this becomes 10 to power 10. This becomes minus 1. Correct? Now, which one is bigger quantity here? Obviously, this one. And in this, which one is bigger quantity? This one. So the trend changes because the minus the trend changes. So higher value of KB implies more basic is the compound and for PKB the trend changes. So the lesser the value of PKB more basic is the compound. Please don't be confused here. See just understand KB is fine because KB is directly direct relationship. So higher value of KB, KB is what base constant. Higher value of KB implies more basic is the compound. But since we are using PKB lot of places pkb is nothing but minus log of kb right so there is a minus here so that the relationship changes smaller value of pkb implies more basic is the compound correct so
So the conclusion is larger the value of KB, the larger the value of KB, so this guy, or the smaller the value of PKB, stronger is the base, correct? Larger the value of KB, stronger is the value of PKB, uh, sorry, larger the value of KB, smaller the value of PKB, stronger is the base, correct? So I can say that since I'll be dealing with PKB, it's a, a term which is used, so I'll say smaller PKB implies stronger base, correct? And the PKB of ammonia, if you see ammonia, light PKB value, or ammonia is nothing but 4.75 and this aliphatic amines are stronger bases than ammonia we will talk I will discuss why because of the plus i effect these guys right plus i effect <coughs> if you see there are some alkyl group attached to it so the plus i effect they increase the electron density on this nitrogen already it had lone pair of electrons since the electron density on this nitrogen increase it becomes more reactive correct so and this this pkb values for this aliphatic right here pkb for aliphatic uh, amines will be of the range of 3 to 4.22 obviously it will be less than 4.75 because they are more basic than ammonia, right? But the range will be 3 to 4.22. Correct? And aromatic amines are weaker base. Aromatic amines are weaker, right? We have seen that. Correct? Because, because the electron withdrawing effect of the aryl group. For example, if I have a aryl group here, they'll attract electron, they'll attract, they'll withdraw electron. So this nitrogen will become less electron rich and thus it will not be that much reactive. So they are, their uh, P, what we call PKB value will be pretty high, right? It will be uh, maybe in the range of nine to 10. But please note that my aliphatic amines are stronger base than ammonia. For ammonia, the pH, PKB value is 4.75 and for my aliphatic amines the values are less. Smaller the value of PKB, stronger is the best. Smaller the value of PKB, stronger is the best. Smaller the value of PKB here, 3 to 4.22 as compared to this that means aliphatic amines are stronger based than ammonia. For example, if you see methane amine, CH3NH2, for this the PKB value is 3.38. If you see and methylamine for example this guy you have H here CH3 here so this guy is all the more stronger because there are two methyl group attached to this nitrogen and they are pumping more and more electrons this is all the more basic that means the PK value will be lesser than 3.38 and it has value 3.27 okay so that way the trend continues In fact, plus I effect is not the only effect that, that uh, plays the critical role here. There is something called steric hindrance also. If you see th this compound, I have CS3, CS3 and CS3 here. This will be an dimethyl methamine. So the expectation is that it should be more basic. Its pH should be less than 3.27, but actually it is not that much basic it is less basic why because the steric hindrance there is not much space for nitrogen to attack correct so as i have told that amines are basic in nature they react with acids to form salt you can have some reaction here for example rnh2 it reacts with acid hx so what happens this is nitrogen having lone pair it's attack this h plus because this has slight negative charge this has slight positive charge because Halogen generally are more electronegative, so it will attack this H. What it will get is R NH3 plus NX minus, and this is a salt. If you want to see for aromatic compound, we can have a similar reaction. 
this is my aniline and this reacts with a Cl let's suppose and this attacks on this you get NH3 NH3 plus Cl minus and this is also salt this is called any linium chloride any linium chloride correct so that's what it is it is basic in nature it will react with acids to form salt also as I have told that smaller value of smaller pkb implies more basic correct and I told there are so many um, things that impacts the uh, basic nature so one is the plus i effect and also we had told that steric hindrance also plays a role correct I explained also that for example based on the plus i effect only my based on plus i effect 3 degree amines are more basic so this is most basic based on plus i effect and then I have 2 degree for example this and then I have 1 degree R N H H H why because it has 2 alkyl group donating electron to this nitrogen it has only 1 alkyl group it has 3 alkyl group based on plus i but when you also include the steric hindrance effect you will see that this is most basic this is least actually Right. So there are so many factors which we have to take into consideration uh, when we say that okay this is most basic and this is least basic. So steric hindrance is one and plus I effect is another. And these amine salt which we have got when you treat this with base you will get back RNH2. You will get back amine. Right, so from see this reaction is a very good reaction. You have amine here, you react with acid, you get a salt, you again react with base, you get amine back. Correct? Plus water and some X minus you'll get. So the beauty of this reaction is this salt, we change color. This particular salt we have, this is water soluble. Correct, but this is not soluble in organic solvent. This is water soluble and organic solvent insoluble. Correct. Now, this method is used to separate the amines from non-basic organic compounds. Let's take this now. So let me first write the reaction which we had in the last line. So I have my RNH2, this is my amine. And you react with some acid, you get RNH plus x minus and when this when you react with OH minus you get RNH2 back correct so this salt is water soluble but organic insoluble Correct. So this is used to separate my amines from this amines. I can separate non basic. Please note non basic because if it is basic, it will react with the acid. Non basic water insoluble compound. Water insoluble compound 
See what we do is we start with this here. We start from here. So in this place we have amine and also impurity. Okay. So once we react this with acid, you get this compound. This is water soluble but organic insoluble. Right. So we'll mix this whole thing with water. You mix this whole salt what you have got here in water. So what will happen is in water, my RNH3 plus X minus will be soluble. But here, this part will not be soluble. This is my impurity. And this impurity is nothing but water insoluble, non-basic impurities. Hope you understand. See this, I had this whole solution with impurity, I mean with impurity also, I reacted this with acid, I got this RNH3 plus X minus the salt. This salt is water soluble. So I dissolved everything in the water, but this also contains impurity here. Right, because this also had impurity. Correct. This impurity came here also that didn't react with HX because it was non-basic. So this impurity here. So here I have impurity and salt. When I mix this impurity and salt in this container, what happens is this impurity won't get dissolved because this is water insoluble impurity. If this is water soluble impurity, you can't separate by this method. If it is water insoluble impurity, it will settle down here. It will not dissolve. You can filter everything. So what you get is all the salt, pure salt dissolved in water without any water soluble, water insoluble impurity because whatever is not soluble, you can just filter it very easily using filter paper. Once you now after this filter from here, you can see, you can see there is a filter. So once you do filter, you get RNH3 plus X minus only. The impurity is stopped here because the filter will not allow the impurity to go. Correct? All the water insoluble impurity will be stopped here. So I have this R NH3 plus X minus the salt here. So this salt when I react with base, I'll get back my amine. Hope you understood what is happening here. So I have this amine plus impurity. I reacted with my acid. I get the salt and impurity because impurity was here. Now I dissolve everything in water. In water, the salt got dissolved, but the impurity is not dissolved. The impurity I can filter out easily using filter paper. I have only the salt in water, dissolved in water. That salt dissolved in water, I reacted with the base. I get back my amine. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot for watching.